This is a beginner guide for Stranded Alien Dawn. The video has chapters that allow you to navigate to general items that we're talking about. However, it is a complex game and so there are different tips in different parts of the videos that aren't necessarily relevant to those chapters. So I do recommend you watch the entire video in order to get the most tips. If you'd like to see more content on this game, please do consider liking and subscribing. The more people that do that is just an excellent gauge as to how popular this is. But let's jump into today's video. I'd like to say a quick thank you to Diablo the Second, who helped me a lot with today's video by providing me with some tips. I got chatting to him on the Stranded Alien Dawn Discord and I'll put a link to that Discord down in the video description if you guys want to check it out. So the first decision we need to make in game are what survivors we want to take with us onto our new planet. And there's quite a lot to read and consider here for all the different people. They all have different stats and of course different positives and negatives. What I'm going to do now is go through my decision as to the four people I suggest you take. I will say though that depending on your own playstyle and things you enjoy in game you might want to do something a bit different. This is just my suggestion. So the first guy I really like is Ken and there are a few reasons for this. First of all when you are scavenging he will gather twice the amount of scrap metal that anybody else will and this is something that you will be doing quite a lot in the early part of the game. Similarly he also has the trait of bloodlust where he gains happiness when either killing or observing death. If you couple that with his fantastic combat skill of 7 and his good physical skill of 4 he makes an excellent early game hunter and salvager. And these are two things you will be doing quite a lot of in the early game so I really like to have him in the team. The next guy I quite like is Quinn because he's very good at construction and early on we are going to be doing a lot of building so it makes sense to have him doing that. As well as that though he loves going on expeditions and therefore they take less time and again that is going to be quite useful to the early to mid game. Plus he has permanently increased happiness and happiness can be something that can be a bit of a struggle so definitely a good one to have. Now the next person I quite like is Krista but she is going to be a bit of a controversial one. The reason I say that is that she is totally incapable of doing any crafting and has a movement speed decreased by 10%. However, intellect of seven is the highest out there and early on research is going to be really, really important. So I like to have her in the camp and that's literally all she does. I just let her worry about the research side of things. She can also help out with the farming and cooking. She's not terrible at those two things. So later on, you know, we can move her to doing more of that sort of stuff. But research early game can literally be the difference between your town making it and not, I find. So I definitely want her to be in the crew. And the final person I really like to include is Risa. So let's put her up there and let's look at her stats. So the reason I like her is her farming is excellent. Excellent. It's level six and something she's interested in. So that's really going to be helpful because farming is going to be very important, particularly in getting us through our first winter. On top of that, she's got the increased happiness and a chance to field observe unknown species during expeditions. So she's really just a great all-rounder. And she does have combat and intellect attributes as well as a little bit of healing and other things. So really, I think Rita's an excellent person to have in your camp. So immediately once you are in game, you've just had the uh, crash experience there and now you're looking to start up your town. The first thing I like to do is simply pause and start looking around at the lay of the land. One of the wonderful things about this game is every time you play it, you actually start in a completely new area. So there are new challenges, new positives and negatives every time you get started. Now you can see here that short term we're living in this little valley area, but if we wanted to head off this way for expansion, it would prove pretty difficult with all the mountains and trees that are in the way. However, if I turn right around and we start heading down this way, you can see that things start to get a little bit flatter and then a lot flatter once we get down to here. On top of that, we start heading towards water and a lot of natural resources and just flattish land that we can actually build on. So immediately I know I want to start heading down in this direction and making use of that. I just find it's good to know and plan out your town as early as possible and just know exactly where you want to be heading and what you're trying to achieve. Now one of the first things you're going to go ahead and make yourself is a shelter that you'll then put beds in for people to sleep in. Now when people are sleeping, if they can hear people working nearby, it will disturb them and this reduces their happiness, which is something you want to try and keep as high as possible early on. As such, I'm going to build my thing over here for the shelter and I'm going to try not to have too much near it. Having the mountain behind means there's not really much that's going to be going on behind there and I'll just be sure not to build too much on the inside. So with these shelters and the beds placed the next thing you're going to want to build is a campfire and actually brings me on to a useful tip. If we click on the camp button here and the campfire button you can see that if we hover over it it looks like things are redded out there in terms of the ingredients needed and you may think you're not actually able to build this and just sort of keep moving on to something else but if we left click it then it comes up with other options and at that point we can actually select this and place it down. Another thing you want to get into early on is the research side of things so if we go to science, we can click research desk and place down a research desk of our choice. It's a good idea to put things under shelters whenever possible. This will help with your happiness of your workers later on, especially when the weather gets bad, like when it gets to winter and that kind of thing. In terms of the research itself under manage and then research over here, there are different ways that you can go with this, of course. And a lot of it will be down to your own personal playstyle and that kind of thing. But because I have Ken in my town, I do want to do the spaceship deconstruction because he's really good at salvaging and then we can get on with doing a lot more of that. Now, it's a good idea to start scheduling your workers 
early on into the game so we can go to manage and then schedule to open up this GUI. At this point, I like to tell my people to go to sleep at 10 o'clock every night. So let's put that down there as sleep for everybody and then sleep until 6 a.m. That gives them eight hours each night where they're going to be asleep. And also if they're all asleep at the same time, chances are they're not disturbing each other by working. I then like to give them two hours in the morning where they can do anything they want to do, followed by one hour of relaxation. They then work from nine until five and from six onwards, they're going to have a bit more relaxation. So basically two hours here of relaxation sounds good. And then another hour here of the rest or the anything I should say in there. Early on into the game, I also like to give them a little break there. So I let them do anything here, followed by a relax here. Now, this is just how I start out. And then depending on how the happiness goes, I may make them work a bit more or a bit less or rest a bit more or a bit less. But early on, you do want to have these blocks because if you just have them working all the time and not telling them to relax and sleep, they will get unhappy. And happiness is definitely something that's important. So it's going to be something we're going to come back to throughout this beginner tips video because there are other things we can do to increase their happiness. Now, after you've done the schedule, it's a good idea to also lay out the activities. So under manage, we can click activities to load up this GUI. Now we have a couple options here. We can do simple priorities. So just like, yep, you're responsible for doing this and this and not this, or we can have it like this where we change it to complex priorities. And that's shown by just having a cross next to these simple priorities. And then we have these numbers that range from nothing like that right the way up to five. And you'll see, for example, Krista, she's unable to craft, so we can't tell her to do any crafting anyway. Now, early on into the game, these simple priorities will be completely fine for us to use. We can worry about complex things later on, but let's just have a look at these simple ones for now. So this is how I have mine set up. And again, this will depend on the people you have, but the point I want to make here is to pay attention to this early on. Just pause your game, take a little bit of time to look at who's good at what, and then get them doing certain things. Now, for example, with Krista, I've got her only doing research. So the point of that is to get a lot of research done with just one person doing research through our game, but she is very good at it. And then without going through everything in too much detail, I just want to say, of course, make sure you have at least one person doing all of the different tasks you have available to you. And at the very least, just hover over. And if I hover over Ken, for example, I know that, okay, so combat and physical, that's what he's good at. And that's what all of his tasks here are to do with. So he's going to be constructing, he's going to be hunting, he's going to be cutting things down, but he's not like planting and harvesting because we have other people to do that who are good at farming. So make sure you do pay attention to this. It will pay you a lot of dividends in the long run. Now, early game, it's going to be important to harvest yourself a lot of food. So a lot of berries and things like that. However, do bear in mind that the food will spoil. So you don't want to gather too much of it. Once you've gathered a fair bit, so between the four people, if you have say a thousand or more food, that should be plenty. Maybe stop gathering food at all and get on to doing something else. Being efficient early on into the game is really, really useful and will really help. Now, of course, before you can actually gather food from these berry bushes and things, you do need to make sure you are observing them. So get someone doing that early on into the game. It's also a good idea early on to make sure that you click on the ship that you landed in and get scavenging it. Now, if like me, you have Ken, make sure that he's the only one selected to do the scavenging as he's going to get double the resources. So you only want him to do that stuff. Now, there are some simple ways that we can increase the happiness of our villagers when we're starting out. And one of them is as simple as placing down some furniture like these chairs right here. So under furniture, we have a few different options and under chairs, just by placing down wooden chairs for them to sit on will actually make them pretty happy. Another thing we can do under light and heat is go to wall torches and place down some of these wooden wall torches. So I'm going to place one on that side and also one on this side over here and place down just a few more over on these buildings as well. The darkness is something that can upset your villagers. So having a little bit of light around the place will definitely help with that. The other thing they really like is to eat sat at a table. So it's a good idea to make a table early on into the game. And we're going to make that first before we put the chairs around it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down here. And then after that, go to the chairs and get some of these chairs here. Now you see that if I just bring the chairs up to the table, they actually will snap to it. So that's quite useful once while we place the table first. So we can put two over on this side and two over on this side as well. And then everybody has a chair at the table and they can sit there and eat their food, which will make them a bit happier. The next thing I like to do is make a new storage area underneath the shelter and put that near to where we're going to be eating on a regular basis. The way we can do that is just by placing down the storage and putting a bit of a stockpile in there. It can be a good idea to store your food near your table and chairs as well in order to speed up efficiency. So the way we do that is under the storage area here, we can go onto the storage shelves and select whichever shelves you like. It says here that it will store resources, but cannot fit the large construction resources. So that's perfect for what we need. So I'm going to select that and just put them over here next to the table. There we go. Very good. And because it cannot hold any stone and wood and that sort of thing, that will all go over in the uh, stockpile area over here. And then we'll be left with just food stuff here, which is really near to where they're going to eat it. So that's perfect. And talking of food, we have now managed to observe this bush fully and we have here a fruit bush. So that will, of course, provide us with some fruit. So the best idea now is to find the ones closest to your storage area. So for us, we want it to all go here and just select like a load of these and go ahead and hit harvest. Do bear in mind that if you cut the crops, you will actually lose the harvest. You want to harvest them just to get the resources, not cut them for the other resource that you'll get from them, like the sticks. And there we go. You can see here now that people are sitting down in order to 
sweets. We've got Quinn and Rita right now sat down here. Krista's just joined them and they're all just sat down eating, which will make them happy. And we can see here if we click on Quinn that the fact that he ate on a table gives him plus six happiness. And the next thing I like to make is under production here is a workbench. Let's go ahead and look to place that. And we want to place it down near where all of our raw resources are so that it's more efficient that way. So I'm going to put mine under the shelter right here. And that's perfect. He's right next to the resources here. And then we can just go and grab all that stuff and do the work there. Now, the next thing I recommend you research very early on is the weaponsmithing right here. So let's go ahead and click that one to get that underway. Weapons are so important early on for hunting and for surviving and dealing with anything that attacks you. So it really is an important one to do very early. So we now have our workbench already built and there's nothing we particularly want to craft just yet, but that's because we're waiting for the weaponsmithing research to happen. So we're now nicely prepared when it has been done. So as soon as you have researched the weapons, like I've just done there, we can go to the crafting area here, the workbench, click craft weapons, and let's start getting some spears made. Now for now, what I like to do is hit until and put that up to four. There we go for the uh, spears right there. The reason being, we only have four survivors here, so each of them will have a spear under this, but chances are you only actually have about two people who are using them at any one time anyway. Now you want to bear in mind that under the activities thing right here, uh, where it says research over here, this doesn't just include researching new technologies, but also plants. So you want to have at least two people that you've got a tick next to the research for. Otherwise, uh, if it's just one of them, whilst they're researching plants, no research is being done towards the technology you're researching at that time. Now by researching other plants, you can find yourself some new materials and particularly new food can be very useful. So if we click on this right here, we see that we can get buttermelon from this. And the good thing about this is it means that when we harvest this, there's now another food source. If you just keep telling your people to eat the same things over and over again, they will get very bored of it and this will affect their happiness. Now I managed to scavenge some laser pistols. So the first thing I want to do as soon as I've done that is go to Ken over here, click on this inventory button here and then equip these laser pistols here. There we go. Just press uh, play now and it takes him a little bit of time to go and get that, but he's going to go and get his laser pistol. So with that equipped, this is a very powerful early game weapon and it's going to give us the uh, opportunity to go and hunt some animals. Now you'll see a variety of different animals you can hunt, but the ones I like to hunt are these ones right here. The reason being, we don't just get red meat from them, we also get hides as well. If you compare that to some of the other animals, like insects, for example, you'll just get the insect meat. So it's a food source, but it doesn't give you the hides and hides are actually used for quite a lot. So I'm going to take Rita off of hunting for now. So only Ken is on hunting. And that way, when I click on this animal here and hit hunt, I know it'll be Ken that does it. Now, in the meantime, while he's doing that, we want to go here and build a production unit and build ourselves a drying rack. You can build a small one, but honestly, I don't see the point. You're going to need a large one at some point. So I like to build it kind of early on into the game. So I was about to speed things up, but we now have some aggressive animals coming at us and they're all over here. So what I'm going to do is get to Rita and give her a pistol as well, because we have a second one of those. So we'll speed some up until she has her pistol. The animals are far enough away at the moment that we don't have to, uh, there's no like immediate concern is what I'm saying. So now she has a pistol. We've got her selected. I'm going to shift and click here. And then I've got Ken and her selected. And I'm going to click draft. Then we can click on the aggressive animals to center on them and tell them to come over here and shoot them. Now with these pistols, they should be able to fight them from range reasonably easily. So hopefully we don't have anything like no big casualties or no major damage done. Now we did get a couple of injuries from the fighting there. And uh, basically, if you, that happens to you, what you need to do is go to your workbench, hit craft and craft up some bandages. So I'm going to craft about 10 of those for now. And if I go back here, see the bandages, let's click that arrow there and make those the priority. Now I have three people awaiting treatment. Quinn is the one who isn't. So at this point, I need to go to manage and activities. And for Quinn, I'm going to have just crafting selected because we don't want to lose anybody early on into the game. So he knows now he's just going to go and craft those bandages. I'll also make sure I leave deliver on because I know that over here, if I go to the workbench, it does say it's waiting for the ingredients to craft these bandages. So if I don't have deliver on, perhaps those materials won't get there. The other thing I'm going to do under schedule is right now for Quinn, I'm just going to put it all to work right there so that he's going to start working right away. The reason being, this is obviously a priority that we do not lose anybody. So let's get him to make up those bandages and then we can start to heal people and they'll get better. Once he started to make a few, we're going to go back to Quinn over here and we're going to have him on heal as well so that he can then go and heal everybody up. Obviously, they're awaiting treatment, so wouldn't be able to do it themselves. So by doing this, he can now go and take care of them. And you see here, he's about to heal the first one up. Maybe just needs a few more bandages, but he's got everything selected he needs. So he'll know now to like either deliver the materials or make the bandages or heal people, depending on what's appropriate at that time. So in the meantime, Ken has been off hunting. And if we go over here, we can see that he's managed to get himself some raw red meat and he's put it into the drying rack. So this will dry the meat out, which will preserve it for longer. And we have now an extra food source, which will make everybody even happier. Now that everybody's been healed and they're just recovering, I'm going to go ahead and put Quinn's schedule back to normal. So he's the same as everybody else. And also under activities, I'm going to get him doing more than just uh, crafting and healing and stuff because he was uh, pretty good at some other things as well. So we want him to do that as well. So this is something that you'll keep coming back to time and time again, sort of the micromanagement stuff, whether it's the schedule or the activities. And it's important that you do that in order to be as efficient as possible and get the most out of the game. Over time, as more materials become 
income available to you, do keep an eye on the furniture section and build things like the shooting target, punching pole and dartboard. As soon as they become available to you, it's definitely good to build them as they will be something that will keep the people's happiness up. And again, happiness is very important. Now, this next tip is actually really, really important. If you're new to the game, it's not something you'd know to do and it could cost you your survival. And that is this plant right here. So if I click on this plant right here, you'll see that it just says tall leafy plant, but this is what it looks like. So this is actually called a grain cob and once we've observed it, we will see that for ourselves. And as you might have guessed, it does in fact drop grain. The reason this is so important is if we go to manage and then to research, you'll see that down here there's antibiotics production. And in order to unlock the ability to do this research, you have to find or produce grain. And we're going to get that from these guys right here. Now this is so important because if you don't have the antibiotics when it comes to winter, pneumonia will spread through your villages and kill them all off. So immediately, once I've found these, I'm going to go ahead, select them and select observe. And we're on about day one of summer right now. So summer is when these plants start to bear their fruit. So you want to either observe them just before summer or as soon as it gets to summer. And that way you'll be able to harvest them, get all the stuff you need from them in time for the winter. So let's speed through this and uh, we'll do that and then I'll show you how to make farm. So I'm going to speed through this process of observing them and uh, then we'll harvest them and make some farms out of them and all that good stuff. But yeah, very important that you find these guys. So when your workers are busy doing things, if you're looking for something to do, make sure you come and observe these and then eventually harvest them. So with this plant now observed, if we uh, go ahead and click on it, you'll see there is the grain cob indeed and says there that it will yield grain when we harvest it. So the next thing I want to do is make sure I select all of these and harvest all of those and also all of these over here. There we go. So any that I can find in the vicinity, I definitely want to harvest all of that to get as much grain as I can. So Rita has been harvesting the grain. You can see there she's transporting 20 right now. But if I go into my research, you'll see that the antibiotics have now unlocked. So here we go. We can go and get those started. So you don't have to wait for them to arrive in your storage unit you can uh, basically start that research as soon as they have been picked up. Now the other thing we'll be able to do now is to make grain cob farms now that we've started to harvest this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and do that and just find a nice little area here somewhere where we can make one of these farms. So uh, for the sake of this tutorial I'm not going to worry too much about where I put it. I'm just going to show you guys the process of doing it. Now I didn't find a lot of this stuff so I'm just going to make a small farm and we can see here uh, the different like this right here is 100% growth right so that's really good. If we come down here there's a few 80% around and then some are just not very good at all. So for now I'm just going to build a small one as I haven't found much of it so we're still like a little five by five in here and uh, that will be a nice place for that to grow. The next thing to do when you build a farm is go ahead make some fence up just some wooden fence here and build the fence around your farm. The reason we're doing this is the farm will attract animals and if you don't fence it off they will come and destroy your crops so the farm would then be pointless and completely wasted. Make sure to also select a fence door and place that in as well so let's just put that one in uh, there we go just like that. That will allow people to get in and out and obviously that's needed for the farm to actually work. So to continue the process of making the antibiotics once you've done the research you have to build one of these things right here which is a fermentation barrel so i'm going to go ahead and just set the wooden one there and build it just over here near the storage as that'll be more efficient now once the barrel is built you can go ahead and select it and click ferment up here and then choose to ferment some antibiotics so i'm going to go ahead and put that on 100 because antibiotics really are something that you can never really have too much of so that will now slowly ferment over time and we've also got our grain farm planted over here as well as some more that i've told people to harvest that's a bit further away but we're doing all this in the summer so it's given us plenty of time to get this preparation work done so that when it does come to the winter we will be ready for it. If you like this video and would like to see more content on this game please do consider liking and subscribing it really is greatly appreciated and gives me a great gauge as to how liked this game was. But for now I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.